Hi Creator! Welcome to Odessa Rose Creates. I'm Robin Schmidt and I'm an independent Chalk Couture designer here to share with you my love of crafting and creating with Chalk Couture's reusable silkscreen transfers and Chalkology paste. So today we're going to work on a Chalk Couture surface. All these products are available to purchase on my website chalkcouture.com slash Odessa Rose. You'll see that link up above in the description of this live. So um, the burlap board, this is the large one. It actually comes in this gray color and I spray painted it first with just some spray paint. This one happens to be uh, the color of satin Italian olive, which is a great kitchen color, food color. Um, so it was really a deeper olive and then I like to sand them after the paint dries. Main reason, two reasons really, the main reason though is um, this burlap has a lot of fibers on it and hairs and things. So sanding it kind of takes that off, well it does take it off and that's helpful for when we go to print with our transfer, we don't have those little hairy fibers um, sticking out after we print and so it just makes a much smoother surface. Another reason is I'm just aging this piece up by sanding it. It kind of almost tears the edges, just uh, wears them down. I also expose the nail heads back a little bit to a silver color versus just being spray painted. Um, but you could, and I'm going to try it next time, sand the board first to get rid of the fibers and then spray paint. But I do kind of like exposing the nail heads back. And I suppose you could cover the nail heads because they are kind of a bronzy black color initially. But um, we're just going to go with this route <laughs> see what happens. I'm going to actually add some uh, Distress Spray Stain in tea, tea dye color, um, basically around the perimeter. I just kind of wanted to give it a vignette feel, kind of just uh, bronzing the edge a little bit and maybe a little bit more down in here. Because if you watched my life before about the spray stain, um, the uh, dye from the spray stain comes up into the chalk paste which kind of antiques everything, depending on what color you use. So I'm kind of counting on that a little bit down in this area. Um, also, if you've been watching me, you know that I'm almost pretty much out of white chalk paste. It's on order. Um, but I did have some paste packets, older ones. So I just uh, added it to some leftover grayish. Grayish is an older color that we had. Um, it's kind of gray, beige, really light but I added a bunch of white paste packets to it. Got it all rehydrated and um, it's looking pretty good. So it's slightly gray, um, which doesn't look bad with this, but I still want kind of an antiqued look, a little bit, kind of a mix of it. So we'll see if my vision can come to life. So I'm still kind of mixing this up and it keeps um, drying up on me because this is old paste formula. So um, you gotta keep it, keep it wet. Okay, so I set that aside. So I'm taking my um, Dis Distress Spray Stain in tea dye color. This is a product by Ranger, okay? And uh, I tested it, I think up here on the top, just to see what it looked like. And it did give a little bit of bronzy look right there. So I just want um, hints of that going around the edges and um, let's just see what happens. I thought about applying it or squirting it on and then rubbing it in with this towel or rag. It's an old t-shirt. Because I really don't want it to look splattered or splotchy. So you see how that just kind of rubs in and it's just kind of bronzing it up a little bit. whether to spray my rag. Try that too. No, I think I'm 
plastic, it just absorbs into the into the rag more than it does the rubbing it on. So I'm gonna spray it on here, and I'm just gonna rub it in. I want it on the sides, but I'm also gonna do it on the top around the edges. And I'll probably do this more of this after we're done so you don't have to just sit here and watch but you can see how i'm just kind of bronzing it but i don't really want the spots so might have to just do more of it and rub it in that's why i'm experimenting with the sides before i do the top on how i want it to look okay so this is the bottom and i want more of this bronziness towards the bottom <clears throat> got my hand really good um, so I'll see if I can get more of a finer even spray going across here so not only am I doing it for the background color but I also know that that dye will come up into my chalk paste color and um, antique it a little bit Kind of want to just blend it into the lighter. The top I'm going to leave kind of more light, but the dark, a little bit darker out towards the bottom. So something like this, but I do want it around the edges. So I'm just going to. Spray it around the edges. I think if I do stand back, it won't be quite so so much of a circle. I probably need a piece of cardboard underneath here. I hope you can see the color changing. Where are you? Uh, let's see if I hold it up. You can see it getting more bronzy towards the bottom. Just going to kind of bring that up along the sides. do it around here I guess I should do that now because I don't want to spray my print once I get my print on so I'm gonna just kind of rub it in here this is the side we already did sprayed in my mouth for some reason. Okay. So this color is the Thai tea, tea dye. Oh my gosh. Tea dye. So it's not as dark. It's a little more reddish. You can see in my rag. The color of it. Looks pretty with the green. Let's take a look here. I 
leaving some of this more that regular color that it already was, but it's just kind of bronzing around the outside. Looks pretty good. Corners are dark. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with that. If I could just find the cap. Now, if you read the description, you're going to know maybe an idea of what transfer we're gonna put on here. I'm gonna hop on my iPad here to see who's who's watching today. Hi, Margie. Hi, Diana. Let's see. I use a dark wax for that effect. Yes, but I find it hard to wax these burlaps. Um, and I do that a lot on my other surfaces, but I'm, I'm really loving this because then that color comes through up into my chalk paste and antiques it. So I have a feeling that when I put the transfer on it, it's going to be darker around there. So it's just a fun product to use. It'll wash off easy on your hands and it doesn't smell and lots of good things about it. Okay. We're going to put this on and just the kitchen down. Um, a place where friends and family gather together. So we're not going to be able to put this part on because it won't fit. Okay. But we are going to put this on. It'll be like this. Okay, something like this, and we're hoping that that stuff that we just sprayed on will darken up this part and then around here, so we'll have a really cool effect. I'm hoping. We'll find out. Let's see, who else is saying hi? <sighs> Diana Rose, love that idea of adding the packets to the jars. <laughs> yes, and that was really old white paste, so I had to hydrate it back. Um, let's see. Put on a paintbrush, I could, but I didn't really want to get it in my paintbrushes. Okay, good morning, Robin. I've seen you use this spray several times. What is the name of it? It's called Distress Spray Stain by Ranger. Just look, Google Distress Spray Stain by Ranger. You don't even have to put Ranger, it'll pop up. Distress Spray Stain. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Lori. Loving the color. How would it look to spray? Spray it with water, that brown spray. Um, how would it look if you sprayed it? Sprayed, if you sprayed, if you with water after you sprayed brown. I don't know what you really mean. Um, this works. It's pretty quick, pretty easy. So I'm just gonna go this route. See what happens. And here we go. Anything else? Oh, before we get started, I'll show you the, if you follow my page, you maybe you saw the video I made on creating this guy in my studio on Monday afternoon. So uh, go to my page, you'll see a little video, a one minute video of the steps and how I created this using the, um, in the background, the, um, what was it called? Country plaid. I didn't use all of it. I just used these squares. And then um, these slat tick or stitch marks kind of like are from Variety Border, which is an older transfer that's retired. That's what's underneath. Uh, and then the new transfer here, stir something, um, transfers on top. Sorry, I don't know the name of it. It's it's three of these words. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, yeah, 
it's pretty fun. I didn't show on the video where my inspiration came for this. And I'll show that to you real quick. Um, I have a picture of it. I just, um, sometimes when I want inspiration, I'll Google, uh, the theme of what I'm wanting to work with. So I Googled like vintage kitchen wall art or for this one, I didn't really get inspiration, but, um, it starts my thinking process usually. Uh, so this one I did like vegetable wall art. This idea that I came up with was not found, but it just kind of gets my wheels going when I need to find inspiration. So, uh, let me just go to my photographs and I'll show you. This is what inspired the piece back there. And it's more like a argyle type pattern in the back, which we didn't have a large argyle pattern. But it did have the blue stitching line in it. I don't know if you can see it. So that kind of gave me the idea of the blue, the colors, um, using that pattern, on, which comes on the on the point of uh, this. So yeah, kind of just gave me the color ideas, and then I just went with that. So it's pretty fun. Um, yeah, they're, they're different colors, but I think they're kind of cool. I don't know. It may end up in my in my new house, but we'll see. Okay, back to work. Back to work. We're gonna. I think I'm gonna start with the. Let's see if I get exact placement of where I want this, so the two line up really well. The two transfers. How is my grandson, someone's asking? He's doing well, I he's doing good. I haven't seen him since Sunday. Um, but yeah, I think he's kind of adjusting to the medicines, Blair said, so that's good. So we have um, in the kitchen collection, gather together. The veggie one is called Fruits and Veggie Pattern, right here. So, this will go like this. So I just kind of want to see where. Pretty much, I think I'll lower this just a smidgen. We'll put the edge right about that far from this edge. And I'll drop it down a little bit. It should be good right in here. Thinking. Okay. This is brand new. I'm not really going to worry about um, fuzzing it. Since we're going on fabric. But you do want to press down really well on this. So you get a nice, sharp, crisp print. should have dried that with the dryer that spray but I didn't okay let's go to this white grayish mix that I got going on here I've been trying to figure that I did I sprayed several of these boards thinking I'd have plenty of white chalk paste and I didn't so I'm having to pivot and think of things to use more with the darker paste, black paste, so we'll see. Hold on just a second, I gotta blow my nose. Or I can't concentrate. <clears throat> okay, 
Now, like I said, I anticipate that dye to come through and darken these letters up, this chalk paste. Probably kind of yellow it a little bit. We'll see. some chunks of chalk paste in this. I want to make sure I skim it down really well. Sure you smooth out your squeegee lines. And nice and smooth. I'm going over it extra because it's kind of lumpy paste, so. If you leave a lump, it'll kind of leave a spot on your print. So just try to make sure I got it well. All right, cool. I'm gonna lay this on the backer and then I will go to the sink and wash this later. So set that aside. Let's dry this. See if it changes colors a little bit. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Morning, Heidi. How's the weather in Alaska? <clears throat> Yesterday we were in the mid 70s. Of course, I was working on tax information yesterday. I didn't I didn't chalk yesterday. And then I met I met via Zoom with our builder and the um, architect draftsman guy for the making the changes in the floor plan. So it kind of took up my day. So I didn't realize it was even that nice out until towards the evening. I went, oh man should have went outside today. <laughs> this is looking really neat. I'm loving the coloring of that dye on top of this green down here. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's nice and dry, and then we'll put the veggies on. really good. I'm going to show it to you before I put this on. See the bronzing effect around the sides and towards the bottom? It's really pretty. It's really pretty. All right. I love it. Um, wait, let's put that on, then I'm going to turn it upside down so I can reach it better. Fruits and veggies pattern. What I really wanted, well, like, I wish this cabbage or artichoke was right here. Right in this corner. Because <clears throat> I think it would look cool to do it in a rich 
bronzy brown color, like just one element, but it needed to be like right here, like this here. I just think it would look really cool, but I'm not gonna try to maneuver around the vegetables, but I just think that would have looked cool if it was like right here and then spotted it in a different color, um, you know, just uh, enriched it, but it wasn't designed that way, so I'm not gonna do it that way. Okay. Who thinks this is going to be cool? I think it's going to be cool. <clears throat> I will turn it. Oh, you can't really turn. I thought about turning it, but... Most of the veggies are upright. Like, if you turn it, then the, most of them would have been on their side. And so, it's not totally random. Like, most of them are right side up. As you can see, the tops are all on the top. So, so I thought about turning it, but then most of the veggies are super sideways. And, oh well. It's all right. I might be able to do that on something else. Like, let's say I did a a six a six incher or something like this in here, and you could like, you know, make this veggie do that. Or it kind of depends on how you line it up. On a smaller surface, you could easily do it. All right, I'm just gonna turn it upside down so I can reach it better. I'll probably do an uh, area and pull it up and then lay that back down and do the rest so it doesn't totally dry in, uh, in the silk screen. This is really, really dry paste. I'm going to moisten it up a little bit. So if you're just joining, I had a little bit of grayish, which is an older color. And I had some white paste packets that were pretty dried out. So I added them to it, added them together and uh, came up with this. So it's not white, white. It's a little off white with the gray in it. Probably should get my four inch handle squeegee. Let me just lay some on here and we'll do that. Take advantage of that four inch squeegee. Let me show you. I don't use it very often. You can see I'm just a little bit more sloppy with it liking it and the board kind of gives in you know it pushes down so then you don't get in a solid uh, squeegee pressure
Let's peel this up. This half. So cute. Right? Even if it doesn't print completely solid, that's cool because it'll give it that vintage worn look. some chunks of white in there so I'm trying to get those chunks off so if you leave them on the screen it'll end up just uh, not printing through so you'll have a spot that's not printed edge here. Let's finish it up. All right. I'm going to lay this on the paper. I usually fold these big ones in half like this into itself. And I take them to a bigger sink and let the water run on both sides in the middle and just go like this. And then I'll start rubbing the paste off of it under the water and then um, just make sure your sticky sides all wet and then I lay it on the counter and take a board eraser and start a wet one and start washing the wiping the paste off and then you also even want to do that on the back side a couple times on the sticky side but that's how I clean the big ones and then I lay them on a towel sticky side up sticky side down and kind of just wipe my hands over it and get all the water off of it then I turn it over and let it dry sticky side up. There it is. That's pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. And really it's done. We're just gonna let it dry. And hopefully you can see how it's more bronze on the bottom and around the edges. It just kind of gives it a focus to the middle. It's pretty neat. Okay, and I got a newer one too. Still works better with the handle. Yeah, I this board was giving in with the pressure, so it was like sinking in. So there, you wouldn't get a full squeegee. So I don't know. I just found it was easier to, and then I found I was getting sloppy on the edges, and I have more control, I guess. A lot of times I'll use it if the the four inch if the surface is really solid but anyway that looks pretty good i'm pretty happy with that okay guys any other questions my right your left it's going to be awesome yeah i i wanted it to be like something right here this or this 
That's all right. It's all right. It still looks cool. It still looks cool. Thanks for all the hearts, everybody. I must make sure we have any more questions. I don't always check it while I'm working because it just takes things away. It's supposed to be 82 degrees in Missouri. Woo, that's getting your shorts out weather, right? <laughs> it's above zero, so it's good in Alaska. Awesome. Maybe we'll you'll get some warmer days coming soon, Heidi. All right. All right. I think that's it for the questions. So hoping you're loving my little my little project today. Um, if you're just joining, it's our Chaka Tours burlap board. Comes in gray. I spray painted it with this olive colored spray paint. A couple coats, let it dry. And then I sanded it with an electric sander. And that takes away the fibers that kind of become a nuisance when you go to silk screen print. All the hairy fibers that were on it. And it just kind of roughs up the edges and, and uh, exposes the nail heads back to silver. Okay, but it also takes away some of the color, obviously, um, which is cool. So um, I kind of wanted to give it a, a vignette, like a bronziness around the edges. So I sprayed on some of this Distress Spray Stain by Ranger. This is the color Tea Dye, which kind of gives it that bronzy look, which looks really sharp with the olive color. So focusing, focusing that spray down in here and then around the edges. And I did it on the sides too. So you can go back and watch lies. If, if you just joined, go back and watch the replay. I will post the replay, obviously. And then um, chopped. So yeah. Thanks again. Have a great day. And let me see if I can find you. I'll talk with you later. Bye.